Shalom. These are the celebrated days of the revealed woman of Revelation 12, because in her days would Satan, Diablo, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles, that snake of Eden, the devil, would be removed because of love. And she has been anointed by that love to bring love in this world. So all people need to stop what they do because when Shiasa speaks, everybody needs to listen. And the ignorant people of the world would only be inviting disaster if they do not turn her, tune her in. And Anna Grace is the anointed teacher for this hour, another uh, brilliant YouTuber flowing with love and no condemnation for one another. This is how the world must go, a world free of condemnation of each other and uh, in, in much greater ways than we have ever thought it were, were to be possible. So in this hour, I lift up the word of God flowing through Shiasa. Uh, of house of beloved for the glory of his latter house is greater than that of the former Micah 4 and she is among the last so that she would be first for the first are last and the last are first same with Anna those are the two revealed women of the book of Zechariah's prophecy Zechariah 3 4 and 5 that leads to the everlasting gospel that must go again to all people to all tribes, to all nations, and it must happen by an arrow. Even the arrow of Isaiah 49, hidden in the quiver of he who is the white horseman of Revelation 6, for he alone carries the bow of uh, victory because he is our majesty thereof. Majesty of victory and victory brings the majesty of love. The most magnificent beneficence of he whose glory shall endure forever and cover the earth as waters cover the sea. And so in these days, it's time to look up and listen to the birds and embrace that. Because if we will not be obedient unto God's word in this hour, quickly racing to the momento, the climax of the age would be a world with no birds, no fish, no mankind left upon it. This is the end time curse of Malachi 4, 6. Unless the hearts of fathers turn to children, children to their fathers for love, that uh, this world would be utterly cursed. That's why I become Captain R, don't you know? Are you ready for that? Are you willing? Are you able? Can you go out to the deep for the treasure of excellence who is that priceless pearl of great reward? Are you? Can you? Huh? Huh? So that's why I tell the kids, hey, you can't love your parents with uh, love that's not even real. If love isn't loyal and faithful and dedicated, it's not even real. So you got to have th through it all kind of love, in spite of kind of love, not uh, love because or if or if they do this, uh, because then everybody's divorcing their brother, their sister, their uncle, their aunt, their sister, their wife, anybody, lover, it doesn't matter who. But the point is we let our love die. So let it wither around no more and let us hold up. Let us be a beggar and go stand on the corner and let us hold the sign. And uh, if we will do that, then maybe somebody will stop and give us treasure of their hearts by the appreciation of us trying to lead people into the only way the way of he whose hands have never been too short to save. And I believe that with all my might, because in this hour, the Lord is saying to all of us, saying, I am your God, you are my people. I forgive your iniquity and I will never remember it as long as we don't commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is to let love die out within us and be no more. Then we're cast out into the outer darkness where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so in this hour, it's time that we should shine as the stars as we lift up the chosen teacher of the age and the chosen gospel writer 
of this age for praise, which is Shiasa of uh, North America. And I am one from the North, Isaiah 41. And uh, in this time, it came about that people like uh, Betty Boop there, she was never a little hypocrite to any little doggy. And a dog does not have more unconditional love than God because it's dog backwards. Uh, God could not make a, lo a rock so heavy that he can't lift it. And he could never make another creature that has more love than he. And so in this hour, she was never hypocritical. And she loved all those little puppy dog kisses. And she just welcomed it. And so I hope that all of you will put a lot of comments under her um, channel, House of Beloved. And uh, that is Shias of North America. And it came about uh, that Jesus despised, Cahill Gabran wrote, uh, on hypocrites because it's time that we stop being hypocritical and judging others. Uh, you know, there, there's people out there pointing to the gays. They're straight walking dildos with ears, porn addicts, most of the guys. And they hear they're pointing at other people. Like, it's like that invasion of the body snatcher movie, you know, snarking. <laughs> Jesus despised and scorned the hypocrites, and I am one who comes forth with stammering lips, shocking lips, friggin' mad sometimes, uh, but with scorned lips myself. I am line by line, precept by precept, the strong and mighty one, revealing all in this hour. You want to know who the revealed one? His name is Morgafischl. The false prophet is Dr. David O.R. of Repent and Prepare the Way, who has called down fire in front of multitudes, exactly as Revelation 13 says. And Morg, he's got the uh, 666 wannabe on his wall, but he's not. The, uh, the real Antichrist is the king of the north of uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel 12 and 13, or Daniel 12. Daniel 11, the king of the north has gone in and he has uh, invaded the king of the south and he has been losing and now he's going back home but will yet come again with a greater army. Uh, and uh, man, we are in a countdown uh, towards some oblivion happening here in this world. So I'm trying to get my music back on. That ain't right. That not even, that not even Christian. Oh, I got it back though. But uh, one thing for sure, this is the hour of blessedness if people will listen to the anointed uh, gospel writers of this age, Cahill leading the way. Jesus despised and scorned the hypocrites and his wrath was like a tempest that scourged them. His voice uh, was thunder in their ears, and he cowed them. In their fear of him, they sought his death. And like moles in the dark earth, they worked to undermine his footsteps. But he fell not unto their snares. He was no hypocrite. He laughed at them. For well he knew that the spirit shall not be mocked, nor shall it ever be taken in a pitfall. And even though I've done everything in vain, Isaiah 49, 4, I've been trying to get my message out there for two years to no avail. No one has ears to hear. But uh, Christ the Lord, he knew he was sending his kingdom aid covenant at the end because we're done with the milk of the word. That's gone sour long ago. Who will come and feed the master's household meat and food, real food? It is he who has built a latter-day mountain, Daniel 12 uh, said, and that is the mountain of the latter days of Isaiah 2, Micah 4, and Isaiah 25, from where God will remove the veil off all peoples of the earth for all who have loved and all that do love as a, a little child, all who have not committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you believe in. You are born again by the letter of the word of the law of God. I am the lawgiver, one like Moses, Deuteronomy 18, 18. And uh, even, even uh, 
Peter said in Acts 3.21 that if people did not listen to the end time revelator, who I am, that Christ Jesus would be kept in reserve in heaven and could never even return because we are all going to be destroyed. This world will be totally toast, never to rise again. No birds, no fish, no mankind left. Isaiah uh, 24 and Zephaniah 1.1, 1, 1, Malachi 4.6, Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Acts 3, 21, uh, Matthew 24, 22. But guess what? Uh, God wants to cut these days short uh, so that all flesh won't perish, but he cannot uh, unless we receive his word. But his word must go to all people, to all all tribes, to all nations, and it's not going nowhere. It's floundering here at the bottom of YouTube, ignored. Uh, you, The world is ignoring the people that God have sent. It's like that old joke, you're going down in a flood, and then you're standing on a roof, and here comes a rowboat. Hey, you need a lift? No, God's going to come and save me now. And then the next thing you know, here's a bigger boat. Hey, you need a lift? No, God's going to come and save me now. And then here comes a helicopter. Hey, we got a rope. We can throw it down. You need a lift? No, God's going to save me now. And then he dies, goes to heaven. Well, why didn't you save me? Well, I sent this. I said, he has sent you a teacher who is teaching uh, Anna Grace. He has sent you a gospel writer uh, who is Shiasa, uh, the woman of Revelation 12. In her days, Satan has been removed. And he has sent you the latter-day Daniel, who I am, the end-time Elijah, who has given the covenant, the covenant messenger of Malachi 3, 1, am I? Jesus Christ never said the words, I am your God, you are my people, I forgive your iniquity, will never remember it, thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And so, as the Lord looked at hypocritical people, he held a mirror in his hand, and therein he saw the sluggard, and he witnessed the limping of those staggering and falling by the roadside on, the, on their way to the summit, to the highest peaks. And he pitied them all, felt really sorry for them. He would even have raised them up to his stature, and he would have carried their burdens. Nay, he would have uh, bid their weakness to lean upon his strength. He was ready and he did not utterly condemn the liar or the thief or the murderer, but he did utterly condemn the hypocrites whose face are masked and whose hand is gloved. Often I have pondered on the heart that shelters all who come from the wasteland to its sanctuary, yet against the hypocrite who is closed and sealed. <sighs> Praise God, Revelation 9, for all those of love will have the mark of the Lamb indelibly stamped 777 upon their brow. And on the day as we rested with him, with Christ Jesus, in the garden of Ponte, uh, Pomegranates, he said unto him, Master, will you forgive and console the sinner and all the weak and, and the infirm? And will, But will you save only the hypocrite alone? <laughs> What a question. And he said, you have chosen your words well when you call the sinners weak and infirm. I do forgive them of their weakness of body and their infirmity of spirit, for their failings have been laid upon them by their forefathers or by the greed of their neighbors. It is not of themselves, just as salvation is never of ourselves, lest any man boast. But I tolerate not the hypocrite because he lays a yoke upon the, uh, those without guilt and the yielding. And people accept condemnation in this world deposited by others or even by themselves when God our Father is not condemning us. He's saying, I forgive you and I will never remember it. And there are no conditions in that kingdom age covenant. It is foretold to remove our shame and guilt by his forgiveness reflecting from the sapphire sea on high, the crystalline bottomless blue ocean of his love. And that is the, the beautiful sapphire sea of the forgetfulness of his forgiveness. And thus our master spoke. And at first I did not understand, but looking back, uh, this witness understood. And then the hypocrites of the land laid hands upon Christ and they judged him. And in doing so, they deemed themselves justified. And meanwhile, they were vipers with their tongues darting like that. 
and they cited the law of Moses and the Sanhedrin and the witness evidence against him. But they who break the law at the rise of every dawn, they break it again at every sunset. They shall be brought to death, the death of uh, being cast into the outer darkness of lovelessness by kicking their love right out of their bodies and out of their hearts. And I will be right back. Maybe, maybe not. Well, where did it go? Oh, right there. And one thing is for sure, there is disunity in the body of Christ. And that disunity is a toxin for all of us. And it works against ourselves. Uh, she asks, it says, our minds are divided. And the question is, if our bodies and minds are divided as the spirit is divided and as the spirit also comes to join us. Uh, and so it's time that the spirit and the soul can be one, but God's word of love wants to cut the soul right out of the spirit and the spirit right out of the soul. And so it is time to realize that, look at a, look at a pond, she asks, it says, and she, in one of her videos, she gives a tour, a beautiful tour. You can see the fish underneath and it's just completely frozen, this water. And uh, uh, this is actually, she asks in her video, uh, describing this. And uh, I'm just reading the transcript from her. And uh, so they're at rest, the fish beloved, and they're very peaceful and very quiet and they're completely at rest and there is no hypocrisy amongst them. And as we live in these human forms, we really don't understand the beauty of rest anymore uh, on our Sabbath day rest. So the fish are showing us something. We can learn a lesson from even nature. And uh, so they're showing us so much more. And um, our journey is taking us to a new place. And uh, Shiasa has called her channel uh, House of Beloved. And that is a place where we can find our very own heaven within our beloved. And she loves us, everyone so much because She's come to realize that unless we love those who we can see, we can never truly love a Lord that we cannot. So we need to let our love uh, explode in these days. And as we do, we will be so blessed. I'll be back in one more second. So welcome to the word of love that is flowing from House of Beloved in these days. I'll drink coffee to that because I quit uh, drinking booze uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, thank you, Jesus. And I'm actually not missing it that much. Uh, so in this hour, it's time to hear what uh, Shiasa has to say about this time at the end. Because we are in a dangerous era. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the nuclear uh, activity of what is is happening. And so in this hour, uh, she says, Hello, beloved. I wanted to talk to you today about how we've mixed up religion and spirituality. And people have been mixing their merds all over the place. Definitions are off. Understandings are off. And uh, her beloved sister, Anna, she says, uh, I love you to Anna. And she is the end time of... Uh, uh, teacher that everybody needs to be listening to uh, and uh, it's time to hear what they have to say about being born again and the doctrine of being born again and Anna was making the case that actually what happens when we're born again as we enter into death the death that we must go through with love who is Christ Jesus that we are not resurrected out of that death until the return of Christ, uh, which is, uh, you know, physically, but spiritually, naturally, we can resurrect tomorrow and we can awake from our slumber. But uh, she says that that is a day or an event 
as we've supposed in the past, but it's not. It's, it's rather a dawning of an awakening that's coming out of our spiritual grave and being born again by love and to discover the true meaning of being born again and the light of love living strong within us as we live as a little child and we commit not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And uh, a few scriptures came to her mind and uh, it's time to realize that uh, uh, the doc all about the doctrine of Christ uh, many uh, that embrace some teachings that have been twisted they are still in death and they are still dead the f even friends families some people that she knows that have come out of religion they become one with the spirit ones that come out of religion religion is a great thing for um, for uh, compassion for charity and benevolence but when it starts controlling your mind and your heart, it's time to jump ship. So it's time for the great falling away to be encouraged by leaders like Shiasa and by myself and by Anna Grace. And uh, for sure, um, she says that uh, people who are heavenly indoctrinated everywhere, they look as evil everyone. Uh, they look at everyone as evil. The Muslims are evil, the gays are evil, the governments are evil, everybody's evil, everybody's after us. These terrible things are coming to pass and they all feel the same way about their neighbor. Oh, you know, I heard that they are this or that and judgmental, critical, uh, unloving and uh, judgmental. I gotta adjust my camera here. And so that's what Shiasa is saying. It's time to hold that little dog and give him a big hug and love, let love and hide not our love from us. And But she is 100% right. So it's therefore we need to relieve ourselves of the law as we come out of death. The law is death and the spirit is life. The letter is death and the spirit is life. As we come out of this, we are imbued with a new essence. We're given a new essence, a new name, a new mark of the Lamb, 777, Revelation 9, 4. And uh, we're given a new name. Our name is Chrislam. Uh, that is the name that uh, the Lord has given to Israel and to all mankind. That is the name uh, of our desolate heritage is being over uh, Isaiah 49, 8. And so in this hour, it is time to get with the understanding that all the pretty bird sounds in the background this world is racing towards these days that are exactly like days of Noah, where there will be no more birds, no more fish, no more mankind, unless more and more of us awake and start walking the ways of love. And God wants to make a way where there has been none, and it's only going to happen through the Kingdom Age New Covenant alone. For the Lord God is saying to all people, I'm your God, you're my people, I have forgiven you, sending Satan to the pit, just as it is written in the chapter of this uh, woman, Shiasa, uh, Revelation 12. Well, uh, because he was the accuser of the brethren, he would have made God into a liar immediately. And, you know, no one can leave me comments about any of this because the Bible actually says what I say it's saying. So we need to come out of the death. The law is death. The spirit is life. The letter is death. The spirit is life. As we come out of that, we're given a new essence. I had to read that again. It's so heavy. And so it's time that somebody who has spiritual understanding that they gain a connection with love that will go far beyond the thought form, uh, a connection that is transcendent, uh, that transcends all names of God and all of his names. Uh, a rose is a rose by any other name and smells as sweet, but his secret name to which every knee will bow and every tongue will confess is not Jesus. Uh, it is the, the name written by John the Beloved in 1 John 4, 7, uh, the secret name of Christ of Mark 4 that only those who want to know would want to know and know and realize his name is love. And that goes far beyond everything that what we've imagined. Uh, so uh, it's important that no more do we say, I know God, it's in 
uh, the eyes or it's in our heart it's in the things that we do and the say it's in our actions actions speak louder than words so many people have conditional love that's fake love it's it's just as shallow as a glass of water kind of love and God cannot even pour out his spirit of love upon those people because if they have no place to put it uh, and it's because they think they're filled with all kinds of uh, conditions and manipulations and judgments and heresies and so it's time to see that it's obvious that the difference between the these two paradigms it's amazing um, and uh, even as uh, Anna says uh, she started a new channel by the way so you got to watch Anna Grace uh, but people get angry uh, and uh, you know there's no need to engage anybody from uh, House of Beloved, but me, I'm looking to engage. Uh, it is foretold of me in Isaiah 49 that I would rebuke many, and I have been rebuking Mr. Morg because he is the revealed lawless one of Second Thessalonians. But one thing for sure, we need to walk with peace. Uh, and because we're coming up out of the grave right now as we uh, come alive within love because knowledge is increasing and as God creates a, a, a perfect storm for our knowledge to increase so that we can shine as the sun then our energy energies will be increasing and all that we feel will become something that's changing like a chameleon into a peacock brilliant and vibrant colors in a former world of black and white. And so it's time that we need to look behind us. Uh, where does our bike go when it goes into a ditch and crashes into a tree? If you're looking off to the left, where does your bike go? When Does it go to the left if you're looking to the right or does it go to the right? If we're looking, if we discern on what we focus on, that becomes the reality of where we go. And we can visualize that happening because we guide ourselves to that end. And so it's time for the love of Christ that those who claim to be a part of the gospel and to be within the gospel and for to know everything that uh, people like she asks and I do in order to present truths that uh, often go most unappreciated. Uh, we could go to church every day. We could read the Bible every day, know this, da da yada yada, and still not know Him at all. Still be unloving and stiff necked uh, and uh, ready for the grave. The proud and the arrogant shall have no root or branch to uh, hold on to in these latter days because the covenant has been given to bring Israel back unto the Lord God as it is written in Jeremiah. 31. First, Christians stole the uh, books from the Hebrews. Then they declared, we are Israel, and all the prophecies for us. There came the distortion alleys. That was the son of Esau. The younger brother stole Esau's uh, blessing uh, by tricking his father. And uh, Israel has now inherited all mankind because the covenant has been given unto them. Jeremiah 31, 1, Isaiah 54, 3. And no one can say otherwise because that is the word of God. And so in this hour, uh, it's time that people need to, to look at what it is that we've been believing. Uh, because there are many, God is wanting to call people out. Uh, and people are claiming evil upon everyone, pointing out evil, evil darkness. People, grow a brain. The Bible says there is no good man. No, not even one. What are we all? We're all evil and we're all good. We're all a mixture. How evil do you want to be? And, you know, Jesus said about born again, you can't even tell which way the wind blows. So all things have been distorted. And the most important commandments of Jesus was always about love. So we got to look at that. And if we look at that, I'm going to put on a really nice, nice video. Love is the living water that he always talked about. And that love comes forth as an ocean. And if you listen very hard, you can hear the crashing waves. For the wind is full and the tide of uh, blessedness is with us.
And so it's time that the Lord wants to qualify all of us as, as ministers of a new covenant of love, not of a dead letter, but of a moving spirit of love. For the dead letter kills and the spirit of life now brings forth the mystery, the end of the mystery of death, which has been engraved in letters on stone. And such came such glory that the Israelites could not even gaze at the face of Moses because of its fleeting glory which would not fulfill the ministry of the Spirit uh, that would now through love become more glorious uh, than ever before because the law works wrath uh, for where no law is there is transgressions remember Romans 4 15 remember love what is pure unto those who are pure is everything. What is pure is everything. So many are stumbling on so that many are not understanding well about that guy that's killed, that guy that's pure. When we live in the law of love, we don't kill, we don't sin, we don't partake of shadows of uh, darkness and death. And our entire outlook becomes different if we see someone kill another person. Me, I love zombie movies, but if I knew it was real, it would turn my stomach. I wouldn't want no part of it. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's lions, there's gray zones. But one thing is for sure that we are all buried under sin and there is no good person, not even one. But yet Christ makes all of us good, even when we're asleep. And so know that there's a love that goes out towards that person, not because they deserve it from God, uh, but because he loves them and they don't deserve it. But his salvation is given to us as a gift and we do not have to earn it or know anything. We just have to be loving people, lest any man boast. And so it's time to grasp these concepts and these understandings so that we don't have to be crushed and uh, um, devastated because we can fall on the rock humbly and not be ground to a powder. If we let that rock fall upon us, then we will be uh, mushed. <laughs> don't do it. So love from love. And until next time, please uh, subscribe to uh, House of Beloved and to Anna Grace. Um, these are the women of uh, Zechariah 3, 4, and 5 and the woman of uh, Revelation 12. And I have had open-eyed visions of the future of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands. Command ye me, thus saith God Almighty, Isaiah 45. I did. And uh, I wanted a, a miracle. A uh, fleece had to be wet in the ground, dry the ground, dry the fleece wet. Or else I wasn't going to believe that he was calling me as Elijah 30 years ago. I've known my identity for 30 years. First I wrote 200 books, then I've produced 12,000 videos, and I've still done everything in vain. But that doesn't matter because so shall God's word be that goeth forth from his mouth. It shall not return vain unto him. He shall accomplish that which he shall purpose. And I am his hidden arrow of Isaiah 49. And he is the great white horseman going forth with that bow. And he wants to put a bow right through your heart so that we can grab uh, that little doggy and know that our Lord God has a lot more love to unconditional than just a little doggy. So until next time, realize that a roaring lion of Zion is roaring as softly as a little itty bitty kitty's tiny eeny weeny as soft as little purr because all of this, the kingdom age rising will happen not by power nor by might but by the spirit of love, one heart united at a time for passion must become our inferno.